While we're on in our third, I told you we're going to enjoy this series, and uh, we're in our third week of our series, Relationship Goals, and, and we believe in God for three things. In this month, we believe in God for healing for our past, equipping for our present, and preparation for our future. Healing us from where we've been, preparing us, equipping us for where we are, and preparing us for where we're going. We believe God can, and that's what we have the God can forms. And so... Uh, I want to encourage you to open up your heart to the Word of God. A real quick synopsis, a recap on where we've been, and then we're going to tackle what God wants to share with us today. Is that all right? Let's recap. Let's take a look back. Week one, we spoke about defining Christian marriage. And we said this. We said, the way that you define marriage will determine how you approach relationships. We said, remember, and we don't want normal, because some of the things I might, may say is, is it's going to sound extremely abnormal. But remember, normal is broken, insecure, baggaged, used and abused, all so that you can drown yourself in what the world has to offer. That's normal. I don't want normal. You don't want normal. God doesn't want normal for your life. So week one, we said the way that we define marriage will determine how we approach our relationships. We said this. We said marriage is not a contract. A contract is based on what? Mutual mistrust. So mutual mistrust says this. It says, I limit my responsibilities. I protect my rights and I limit my responsibilities. If you do, then I will. That's a contract. Marriage, Christian marriage is not a contract. Christian marriage is a covenant. What's a covenant based on? I'm so glad you asked. A covenant is based on mutual commitment. It's not 50-50 equals one. That's the economics of the world. The economy of relationships in the kingdom of God is one plus one equals one. So it's, it's mutual commitment, it's not 50-50, it's 100-100 equals a whole relationship. We said this, we said, we aren't waiting to get married. Marriage is not the goal of our lives. Corinthians tells us that the goal of our lives is to please God. So we're not waiting, we are fully prepared and purpose-driven to follow Jesus no matter what season we're in. So we're not waiting for a knight in shining arm to come rescue us or we're not waiting for another lady to come to our side. No, 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 no. We're pursuing Jesus and then while we're pursuing, maybe take a look around and see who else is pursuing Him. Leave your Bible open a little bit and see if you highlighted the same verse. What the Lord has brought together. You got that too? You got that too? What a coincidence. What a coinky dink. Last week, we had Mads Daisel. Did anyone enjoy Mads Daisel last week? I thought she was just incredible. If you missed out on that message, go to our website. And, and you, you guys, it's just so good. She said, we need to zoom out with an eternal perspective. Like just right size our issues in relation to who God's called us to be. And eternity is the lion's share of our lives. Eternity is the stake. This is just the peace. This is just the tent. Heaven is our home. Zoom out on an eternal perspective, then zoom in with some purpose and then work it out every day. Work on it every single day. Ask yourself the question, what am I doing today that impacts eternity? Well, we're in week three and today I only have three points for you. Someone new just said, amen, this is a good church. I didn't tell you how long each point is, but I only have three. So uh, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna have a good old time this morning. But uh, I thought let's just open up uh, not just opening our hearts towards receiving God's Word, but I also just wanted to take a moment, as I was reminded, to pray for our nation. We're going to pray for our country. We're going to pray for those things that were planned for tomorrow. And uh, we absolutely, we don't, we're not spectators. You know that as Christians, we don't spectate. We are part of the solution because we have Jesus. Not because we're good, not because we're great, but because we have the Lord. And so prayers change everything. I always say this, if you could see what your prayers were doing, you would never stop praying. If you could see what your prayers were doing, you would never stop praying for your kids, never stop praying for your marriage. You would never stop praying for our country. You would always, always pray. So uh, we're going to pray that the Lord open up our hearts. But also I want to encourage you to lift up our country before the Lord and trust God. Genesis 50, 20 vision, 50, 20 vision. What the enemy intends to harm us, God's going to use to build us to accomplish what's happening now, the saving of many lives. Come on, let's pray together today. Lord, we love you and we thank you that your presence is here. In the presence of the King, there is liberty, freedom, there is healing available, Lord. Salvation is here today. Thank you, Lord, that we can come boldly before your throne and bring our requests before you. And we say, speak, Lord, because I'm listening. But God, we also stand on behalf of our nation right now. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, 
every plan of the enemy would be canceled. Every strategy of the devil would be broken. Lord, he can't have this country. He can't have our communities. He can't have our families. And so, Lord, we lift our country before you right now, and we thank you what the enemy intended for harm. You're going to work to the good. Thank you that out of this dark time, the light is going to shine even brighter. Thank you, God, our conviction is going to get deeper for building up this country. When the city prospers, we prosper too. And so, Lord, we pray for the prosperity of our nation, prosperity of our children, prosperity of the city, and we pray, Lord, Lord, we're not going to be spectators on the side and see how I wonder what transpires. No, we're part of the battle. So Lord, I pray, even as we go into tomorrow, we have a firm, settled faith. Our God is in control. It's not out of your hands, God. Maybe over our heads, it's still under your feet. So we lift this all before you. We receive your word by faith in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. Well, week three, we got some work to do week three. And uh, Dino, don't get this wrong. Okay, my small notes over here. Just encourage me. Well, so many times while approaching relationships, uh, we are driven by the premise, maybe the statement, the thesis statement, of Mr. or Mrs. Wright is somewhere out there, which could obviously be true. And maybe they're somewhere in here. You just don't know it, right? Come on now. But if you go home, you'll never find out. So let's just stick around. And maybe you guys can have Lavazza coffee together. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can just boil the hell out of it. And it's, come on now. And the holy water. And then just, hey? No? Okay. Well, uh, the premise is that Mr. or Mrs. Wright are somewhere out there to be discovered, to be found, to be connected with. And that is partly true. I, I believe that to be true. Um, and the Bible teaches that, that it's not good for a man to be alone. And for all the, husband, all the wives out there, you guys know this is true. <laughs> Don't leave him too long by himself. Gets up to mischief anyway. Spends things, breaks things, says he'll fix things, but he is going to eventually. He will get there. He's just been busy. You know, things are hectic at work, and you know, people just need understanding and grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, that's not directed at anyone. Um, but the premise is, is that Mr. or Mrs. Wright is somewhere out there. But actually, the focus, if we understand the literature, if we read the Bible in context is it focuses with regards to relationships very little about who's out there and focuses a lot more with who am I becoming in here. Andy Stanley's famous for this series that he wrote and uh, he tells a story of a young lady that was raised in a Christian home, loved the Lord, went to college and sort of got up in the college life and sort of just got into the whole party scene and she was jawling hard and, 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 she, found, and, she, and she found this great guy and comes back home for the summer and says, Mom, you won't believe it. I found the perfect guy. He's a Christian, loves the Lord. He's got a ministry. He goes, and right now he's on the missions field feeding babies in Cape Town. No, somewhere else in Africa. I mean, he's just the best guy ever. He's tall, dark, and happy. He's got rips and stratons. I mean, he's just, he's just, mom, he's just the best ever. Like he's generous, he's kind, he's led by the Holy Spirit. I'm just so grateful I met him. To which her mom replied with all love and sincerity, my girl, I don't think a guy like that is looking for a girl like you. Now, that sounds very harsh. Yeah, yeah, that sounds very harsh. But here's the, here's, the, here's the truth. Generally, you don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. So the question is no longer, are they out there? The question is, am I becoming who I'm looking for is looking for? Am I becoming who I'm looking for is looking for? So if I'm looking for someone that's generous, kind, loves the Lord... Uh, you know, loves dogs, hates cats. Come on now. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Amen. Stomp on that hair. Come on. If you're looking for that person, are you becoming that person? I don't know if you know the saying, but suit, suit, suit. It means like finds like. It's the principle of kind. It's the principle of kind. You put a hundred people in a house and everyone who, li who likes a laugh will find the people who like a laugh. Everyone who likes to complain and whinge and whine will find, come on now. If you those just don't raise your hand now, like if they're sitting next to you, they're going to find each other. Everyone who, you know, who likes a smoky will find someone else who likes a smoky. You got a light? You got a light? No? No? Anyone who likes a drinky will find those who like a drinky. Got a drinky? Energy bottle? Surt suk surt. It's true. Because you don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. Do you know that's so, that, that's so discouraging? No, it's empowering. It's this, it's, it's this powering it's when, when, when you think that someone else out there has the ability to control your contentment and wholeness in here. 
It's so empowering when you say, I'm not looking for the someone out there. I'm becoming the someone in here. This is what the Bible largely talks about as we are formed into the likeness of Christ. Who am I becoming is a different question from, I hope they come, I hope I'm going to find them today. It's going to be this year. So there's three qualities real quick, only three points, three qualities that I want us to develop as a people uh, in, in every relational season of our life. I think this just makes a strong person. Because remember, it's not 50 plus 50 that equals one. It's one plus one that equals one. And so these three qualities, I believe, are going to make you a whole one. Are you with me this morning? We only got two, maybe three hours left. Okay, we can go. First point is this. This is what we want. We want to become secure in Christ. Everyone say this with me now. Secure in Christ. You want to be secure in Christ. The greatest precursor to married and happy is single and secure. Come on now. Oh, that'll preach. That'll preach. (laughs) Come on, Jesus. I promise you, an insecure person, insecure people need more but settle for less. So instead of having, looking for the right one, they'll just take anyone. And so they, they need more. Have you ever, like, an insecure person's like, hey, what you doing? Hey, wh- why are you going? Hey, why, why are you taking so long to reply? Hey, are you mad at me? I'm like, no, I'm sleeping. It's like, have you? No. Because they need more, but they settle for less. That's not God's plan for your life. But a secure person in Christ needs less and demands more. They need less. They're not needy. So whether you come or go, they don't care. I tell you what, Kelly was picking up nothing what I was putting down. I laid down my best game. I prom- I prom- I believe I- that I used to wear tighter pants than this. I mean, it was just, you don't think it can get, it can get tighter. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Kelly was not picking up anything I was throwing down. I thought she was playing the card like, you know, be mean to keep them keen. She didn't. She didn't even know I was on the radar. She didn't even know I was on the hunt. She didn't even know she was being stalked. She was so busy pursuing Jesus, she didn't even know that I was trying to catch her. She was like secure. She was like secure in Christ. I'm like, great, now I've got to compete with Jesus now. And I'm like, that's pretty tough to do. Seriously. She was running like a thousand kilometers an hour for Jesus. And I was like, sort of like just getting out the gates. And I thought, well, if I'm going to catch up to have a conversation, I better pick up my pace. Now I want to say this. My faith did not depend on her faith, but it was inspired by her faith. Now, I want to say that the person that you're looking for, the person that you wish should inspire you to run faster for Jesus so that you guys can be equally yoked. Equally yoked means to be on the same page. A yoke of the oxen is two oxen together. If one's bigger or stronger or faster than the other, you can't actually harvest the field. That's what it means to be equally yoked. It's just to be, I'm running in the same direction at the same pace with someone else. Kenny was secure in Christ. I just needed to pick up my game. And yes, I may have joined the worship team to spend a little more time worshiping the Lord together. And I I didn't have a ring back then, but I let her know that this, I just want to show you over here. Kitty wasn't picking up what I was putting down because she didn't need anyone else because she was holding Jesus. She was secure. This is what the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2. Kelly's laughing hard. She didn't know about this. It's all revelation for her. Oh, you did know, but you didn't care about me. Uh, You just left me out there to hang and dry. Yeah, there we go. After she said yes, I left the next week. (laughs) Anyway, but that's neither here nor there. Back to the Bible. Thank you for exposing me, Kelly. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 6, it says this, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow Him. Follow who? Jesus, continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down deep into him and let your lives be built on who? On that relationship? On them accepting you? No, you build your life on Jesus. It says, then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Don't let anyone get you captured. Oh, look, look oh, your time's running out. Oh, where's that person? No, no, no. I'm not looking for someone to complete me. I'm someone looking, I'm already completing Jesus. So I'm not, I'm not needy. I'm secure in Christ. It goes on to say, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in human body. So you are also what? Complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. We need to be secure 
in Christ. In your marriage right now, maybe you got married and you didn't know the Lord. I want to say you can rebuild the foundation. Stop trying to paint on a new color of the house, but the foundation is skewed. Say, no, 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 no. Today's the day that we set a new foundation. It's baptism Sunday. I'm, I'm praying that people will just be challenged. Even if you didn't come prepared, we got stuff for you. We got towels and clothes and all these good things. And don't worry about the hair mincing. If you're bald, it's okay. I'm saying, I'm saying, even as a married couple, you can say, you know what? Today, today is the day that we have a fresh foundation. G- we build on Jesus. That's what we're building on. We secure in Christ. You're with me this morning. We secure in Christ. The second thing that we want to develop is that we want to be strong in character. Strong in character. Now, character is not something that can be forced. Character is something that is formed. You can't force character. You cannot acquire character. You can't purchase it. You have to form it. It comes over time. Building a long-term legacy of character is not built on short-term decisions of gratification. That's Dina Chikatilo, TM. You can put that on a t-shirt right there. You mean long-term legacy of a character. No, you like that. Katie's going to print that out for me later. It's not built on short-term decisions of gratification. Oh, it feels good, so I'm going to... No. Oh, it feels good again, so I'm going to... No, 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 no. Feel good, you'll stay in the same place in a circle. That's why as a, as a church service, we're preaching series. You know why? Because I don't, I don't want... You know, four blessed Sundays doesn't equal next steps. But blessing and leadership. So we work backwards. We say to move forward, you've got to think backwards. So what we do as a team, we pray, where do we want our church to land? And then we work backwards to see how we're going to get there. So that you are blessed and led. Long-term character is not built on short-term decisions. We want to have strong character. And Paul gives Timothy five qualities. I said there's only three points, but there's more points under the points. These are sub-points. Five qualities, real quick, on how to build strong character. Are you with me? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 says this. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, faith, and purity. It says this is how you build a strong character. You've got to set an example. That means you've got to aspire to a standard. It says in speech, remember, your words overflow out of the abundance of your heart. They both reveal and construct your life. The words you say, the Bible says, will fill your stomach, not someone else's lives. And so the truth is we've got to be careful of what we say because there's power in words, the power of life and death, life in the tongue. You're with me this morning. It says the way you build strong character, maybe you just change the way you speak. It begins there. Maybe that's your first step. Change the way you speak to yourself and to others. It says in conduct, the way you live. Is what you say and how you live, is there a huge disparity between the two or is there a close the, uh, alignment? When they're all aligned, that word is called integrity. Integrity is that you do what you say you're going to do and you are who you say you are. Have you ever met someone who's not integral, who said they'll do that and there's a big disparity? Well, that's not good character, is it? They may be good looking, they may have all the other things, but if they haven't got strong character, you can't build a strong marriage. Strong character is built through speech, through conduct, through love. Through the way that you love other people, the way you love yourself, through faith. Guys, character is built through faith. Faith isn't a feeling. Faith is the settled assurance that God is who He says He is and will do what He says He will do. So therefore, why does that develop character? Because then I can trust Him that justice will prevail. I don't need to take it in my own hands. I don't have to be sneaky and, and, and do all these things. No, no, God provides. So I don't need to take that shady, come on, shady deal. Because I have faith in who He is and allows character, a strong character to develop within me. I want the speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. He says, Purity actually builds strong character. Now, purity is not just sex before marriage, saying abstaining from sex before marriage. Purity, you know, so, so a lot of people think, I'll get married and that fixes my lust problem. No, you just, you have a lust problem now with a ring. That's all it is. No, the, the, there needs to be a, are you catching one? There needs to be a growing understanding of purity. Of purity, I ask myself this question. Does it hurt the heart of God? And is this his best for me? We said the prayer, God, is this your best for me? And is this pleasing to you? That is my ruler that I measure. Is this pure or impure? Because it might not be sin, completely sin, but it's, it's, it hurts the heart of God. It's not his best for me. And actually it's not pleasing to him. So maybe I should stay. Does that make sense? He said, this is how you build. You want to be secure in Christ. You want to be strong in character. 
And the final thing, I believe quality that we want to develop as people is that we want to be planted in community. Planted in, secure in Christ, strong in character, and planted in community. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Voices determine choices. The quality of your relationships will shape the quality of your relationships. The quality of the people that are around you will shape the quality of your life. And so that's why we're so intentional about saying, don't just sit in a row, join a circle. We learn in rows, but we grow in circles. I promise you, the best, Christianity is a team sport. You might not know this, but the Bible are written to a people that are gathered together and that we are better together. So if your marriage is going through some tough stuff, I promise you, get around people who have solid marriages and they're gonna help you get through that season. If you're single and you're feeling really, I don't know, get around some people who've walked through that season and say, no, keep on following Jesus. Keep on pursuing the Lord. You're not waiting to get married. God's gonna bring someone, yes, but we're gonna focus on this side of eternity, on pleasing God. I promise you, you'll approach the season completely differently. Voices determine choices. I wanna be secure in Christ. I wanna be strong in character and I wanna be planted in community. I wanna make sure that I'm anchored in a season where the wind begins to blow and the storm comes and it's crazy. I want to make sure that I've got people around me that can speak life and not death. Like, oh, just give up. Oh, just throw in the towel. No, I want prayerful, spiritful people who will stand with me when my arms get tired and say, I'll help you keep your hands raised. When the kids are too much, when life is too hectic, I want to stand with some people who will say, this too shall pass. I want to worship with some people who say, this will move forward. You can't see it, but I've been there before. I promise you, it doesn't change your problem, but it changes the power within it. It changes your perspective. God, if you've done it for them, you can do it for me. It inspires faith. I wanna be secure in Christ. I wanna be strong in character. And I wanna be planted in community. Proverbs says this, from verse 13, he says, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffer harm. Walk with the wise and be wise. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says this, don't be fooled by those who say such things. The such things, we're saying, there's no resurrection. If you read in context, it says, there's no resurrection. Jesus isn't coming back. Just party hard today because today's all you have. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. That's what it says. He says, don't listen to people who speak like that. It says, for bad company corrupts good character. I want to say it the other way around. Good character can build, good company can build good character. So choose your company. Choose your friends. Choose your voices. Be intentional about it. Don't say like, you know, did you, there's an enemy that doesn't want you to be part of a group. Why would he want you to make better friends that are gonna lead you closer to Jesus? He doesn't want that. So he says, you know what? Stay in your seats. Don't sign a card. Don't put yourself out there. He says, just stay isolated. That's not the plan of God. That's not even the culture of heaven. We are better together. We are planted in community. And so I thought I would, I'll give you this illustration. I saw it a while ago, and I thought it was so helpful to see how we build relationships as Christians. You were with me this morning? So over here, I have some props. Not the rugby players. Here we go. This is how the world, can everyone see this? Let me just move this aside. I'll move this back a little bit. This is how the world builds their relationships. The first thought with this. Hello. Sure. Rubber, rubber, ding, ding. Look at the legs on that thing. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> and don't let anyone tell you that looks don't matter. Looks count. Because when you're having a bad day, if they're pretty, <laughs> at least they're pretty. That's what Kelly says to me. I'm like, hey. She's like, at least you're pretty. Just keep your mouth closed and you're pretty. You start with the body over here. That's, how they, that's the first building block of a relationship in the world. The second building block is the soul. What is the soul? I'm so glad you asked, asking great questions this morning. The soul is your mind, will, and emotions. It's what you think, it's what you desire, it's how you feel. So you first look at the body. Are we in alignment with the body? Can we like sort of fit? You know, we start with the physical. 
Then we move to the soul. Well, do we have the same interests? Do we think the same way? Do we feel the same way about things? And then we move to the soul and we build on that in the world. And if ever you get to this part of it, you get to the spirit. If ever you think about eternity now, and that, that, what, 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 are you a Christian? Are you a Muslim? Are you, uh, who, what, what do you believe? If you ever do get to that stage in the relationship, the world says, well, if you do get there, then you, you put that one over here, like that. Now, if the height of a skyscraper is determined by the strength of its foundations, this doesn't look very strong to me, hey? This looks really unsturdy. In fact, it doesn't take a lot just to lean and then it's all over. It's, it's not because you didn't have the right components. It's because you had the wrong order. You had the wrong foundations. This is how Christians, I also want you to know that the world builds from the outside in. Christianity is we don't build from the outside in, we build from the inside out. So as Christians, what we do, we first find out, what do you believe? What do you believe? Who's your savior? What's our foundation? We build on Christ alone. We build on the Word of God. I am secure in Christ. He completes me. You don't, you don't, com- sorry, I'm so sorry, Tom Cruise, you don't complete me. Shame the dude must have been insecure because he's short, but I don't know what that's like. You know what I mean? I'm like, I've just been tall my whole life. I, I can't apologize for that. You don't complete me, Jesus does. And that's my foundation. And once we've got that settled, then we take, start taking a look at, well, do we have the same interests? Do we think the same way? Do we feel the same way about things? And, and, and like, are our desires aligned? Do we want to do something for God? What do you want to do for God? What do I want to do for God? Do, you know, this is sort of the uniqueness. And this is, where, this is the foundation. This is the next step. And then once in the covenant of marriage, once you said yes and you got a ringy, then the thingy, come on. Then, come on now. In the covenant of marriage, You add the physical. In the covenant of marriage, this looks a lot more sturdy to me. This will be tested. Matthew 7 doesn't say the storm stayed away. It said when the storm came and the rain fell and the wind blew and the waters rose, your house will not fall, your house will stand because it's built on the rock of the Word of God. Also want you to notice something. That when you get older, that might change. These things may even shift in your marriage. You may have other desires and things like that. But this will never change. This will never change. We actually, we actually, want, we actually want to build on this. This is actually what we want to say. This is our first block because this is the most important one. It doesn't matter how pretty the house is, if the foundation is skewed, all the walls will be crooked. The cracks will eventually come through and the house will fall. But it doesn't have to be that way. The Bible says He gives us a brand new start. He says He gives us a brand new beginning. And I'm praying for two things. I'm praying for salvation, but I'm also praying for relationships. Maybe your relationship was first built on the physical or on the soulful. Well, today you get to make a decision that we actually, we actually want to start with the spiritual, not from the outside in. We want to start from the deepest part of ourselves, from the inside out. Does it make sense? Come on, let's stand to our feet this morning. We're going to pray today. We're going to thank God this morning for His goodness. It's Baptism Sunday. Thanks, Nick. And I want you to lift your heart before God. And I want you to pray these prayers in your heart and mean them if you do. Pray them if you mean them. Say, Lord, I want to be secure in Christ. Maybe I'm secure in my job. I'm secure in what I have. I'm secure in how I look. I'm secure in other things. But I now know that I need my security in Christ. I want to be secure in Christ. Say, Lord, help me be strong in character. Strong in character. I am who you say I am. I follow you and I pursue you. It's not about perfection, Lord, but I have a long-term gain. I want to be strong in character. I want to have integrity. I want to have passion. I want to be committed. I want to have an absolute solid foundation. I want to be secure in Christ, strong in character. And Lord, I want to be planted in community. I don't want to do this alone. I want to have to find it by myself. I want to run a race with other people who are like-minded like me. Secure in Christ, strong in character, and planted in community. We thank you, Jesus. 
if you do not have this relationship I've been describing about Jesus, if Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, if He is not your King, if you have not received Him, or maybe it's been a long time since you've spoken to Him, and you know that today is the day with every eye closed and head bowed. Come on, let's... In this moment, you're saying, Dino, that's me, but I now know I want to make a decision, not because of who I came from or my parents or where I lived, but I know for myself that I'm choosing Jesus and I need a fresh start. I need a brand new beginning and He's the only one who can give it and I want a brand new foundation and I can't build it on my own. I need Jesus today. You're saying, Dino, that's me. I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Then I just want you to raise your hand right now. You're saying, Dino, that's me. I see that hand. That's awesome. Anyone else? You're saying, Dino, that's me. I'm giving my heart to Jesus today. Today is the day that I'm giving my heart to the Lord. Don't allow the enemy to put guilt and shame on you right now about things of the past, decisions that you've made. He says, you're not good enough. No, this is all just a phase. Oh, this is all just a... If that's you here this morning, you're saying, Dina, I'm gonna make a decision now to pray a prayer to give my heart to the Lord. Then just include me in this prayer. Raise your hand saying, Dina, that's me. I'm praying that prayer today that I really mean I want Jesus to be my Lord, Savior. I'm going to pray for us all here today. If you need prayer after the service, we'll have one of our teams in front of you. We'd love to pray with you. I want to encourage you if you need prayer to come forward. But I'm praying blessing over you. And then we're going to sing out a song. And then we're going to give the people, everyone, a moment to slip out and get baptized. And we'll get changed. And we'll go watch them get baptized. Lord, I thank you for every person here today. And I pray blessing on them. I thank you that you're building them up. I thank you the best days are ahead of them, God. I thank you that they came to your house today. It's no coincidence. Holy Spirit, I pray you continue to work on their hearts, work on their minds, deal with us, God. I pray you build us up and encourage us all for your glory. We want to be secure in Christ, strong in character, and we want to be planted in community. In Jesus' precious name and all God's people said, amen.